Good evening, Mr. Buck. Welcome to our bookstore, welcome to Astro Room, uh, our chat room where we uh, talk about culture, art, photography, literature, etc. Um, shall we start with our interview? Of course. I'm ready. Uh, you were the execu executive of the National Center for Audiovisual Art until 2016. Also, you are widely recognized as a photographer, even if you've had only, as I saw somewhere, one uh, independent okay. exhibition. Yes. Is there any difference between your, your approaches to photography and literature? That's because I found significant number of movie scenes, many reflections from film art in your novella. <coughs> well, um I was, uh, from the beginning, from my childhood, uh, I was interested in photography uh, all the time. And uh, that was because of my father. And that was also because of um, the special uh, society we lived in. Um, the steel industry in Luxembourg had uh, marked the identity of a uh, whole region, even of a whole country. And when I say they marked the identity, is uh, that wants to say that they inter uh, they interfered to everyday life of people because they were very important very strong and uh, when you work in steel industries then uh, your life completely depends on it and um, steel industry in Luxembourg used from the beginning film and photography as promotional uh, um, promotional uh, activities so the first uh, the first uh, 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 the first film industri industrial film out of the 20s comes out from the steel industry. So they, 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 they had a very close, a very close um, uh, mini to, to, to everything what was um, at the time the modern media. And people working in steel industry, they could not avoid it completely. Mm, photography played a big role in their life because steel industry, uh, uh, they, they, show, they showed how to do. And um, so my father, I, I learned from him, from, from him. I saw him developing pictures in our in our kitchen when I was a little boy, and uh, it never left me. And um, uh, so did film. We were uh, when I was when I grew up. Uh, I, I was passionate in films, uh, in in uh, in the new avant-garde in in France, in Italian. Italian cinema, especially later with Sergio Leone, I, uh, <laughs> I, I began to smoke because of Sergio Leone <laughs> and because of Clint, Clint Eastwood. What an influence! Uh, because he had the cigarillo in his mouth and he changed it very, <laughs> very quickly. And I was so impressed that the day after I began <laughs> to smoke, and it was a bad time in my life because I, 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 I needed uh, ten years now. Uh, where I stopped, uh, uh, <coughs> but it was uh, to a uh, hard ten years. <laughs> um, so I, I was very close to to, to this medium. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I created uh, the National Audiovisual Center, uh, I, 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 I had a certain baggage. I, I knew mm -hmm. uh, certain things about film, and not all of course, but uh, also about photography. And I was especially in interested in photography in two, picked in two main exhibitions. Uh, before mm -hmm. I knew what uh, Edward Steichen had to do with Luxembourg, I discovered in Paris in the catalogues a famous exhibition, you know it perhaps, the Family of Man. Mm -hmm. The Family of Man is an exhibition of uh, the Museum of Modern Art in New York, created by Steichen in 1955, and it is the biggest exhibition in the world. It's the biggest exhibition ever made and the most legendary exhibition. And I had um, the chance in uh, 85 uh, to get a job in the Ministry of Culture. And I had immediately the responsibility of this mm -hmm. exhibition, which was the only one existing in the world. So I began a restoring project and the uh, project of creating a museum for the exhibition in the hometown, in the, in the north of the country. And this is now uh, my, 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 uh, my, my, my purpose with this collection was to restore it, to study it, to uh, imagine the scenery, to uh, reimagine the scenery, to create a museum, to create space, especially for black and white photography, mm -hmm. to keep it under bad, um, b best conditions. So 
my personal work in photography, of course, I had to stay a little bit behind mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. I had no time to do Big all. responsibilities for yes. other and uh, the second, the second uh, pictures I was very interested to, uh, even before the family of man who was the pictures of the Great Depression in, the, uh, in, in America, the pictures of uh, Russell Lee, of, uh, pictures of, uh, of uh, uh, Dorothea Lange and, uh, uh, and John Bacon and so on, mm -hmm. and these pictures of human condition they uh, were very close to me because I, I came out of this uh, mm -hmm. of, of such a milieu and um, Steichen gave this exhibition too to Luxembourg and uh, um, when the uh, CNA was built uh, mm -hmm. uh, an old water tower near the CNA was restored uh, to become a museum just for this collection uh -huh. this black and white collection so <laughs> I'm very happy about this. I'm very <laughs> proud about this. I, I, I'm, I'm so free to, to say it. Um, but um, I always imagined that, uh, that uh, uh, when I retired one moment, uh, I, uh, I, I would engage myself uh, in uh, black and white uh, plaintiffs uh, uh, photography. Mm -hmm. And the problem was I uh, had a, a, a period of time where I had no contact with photography. Mm. I, I could not, because yep. I had not the time, it, because I, 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 in the time I realized uh, photography in an analogic way, so I developed uh, mm -hmm, the negatives, mm -hmm. I developed uh, the prints and all, I made all the, the technical myself uh, from, from the, the, the photographing since mm -hmm. uh, ready print and even uh, um, since, um, since framing mm -hmm. the frame for the exhibition. So, um, no I time for creativity. I could not go on with this. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go to digital, uh, to uh, Canon PowerFoot and uh, mm -hmm. 10, 9, 10. And um, well, um, that was not sufficient for me. I, I needed the contact with the paper. I needed <laughs> the contact with, uh, with uh, treating. And I, I had to touch. Uh, as I touch a book when I read it. Mm -hmm. so Is it the same with I, the I'm books? No. Yes, I, I, I'm not against, I'm not against fun? reading. Mm -hmm. why, why should I? But I prefer a book. I, mm -hmm. I want to smell it and to see it and to mm -hmm. discover it and to turn it and to put it away and to take it again and so on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what do you think about the it's Macedonian wonderful, wonderful, version of your book, wonderful, Amateur? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and what I wanted to say, then I um, uh, wanted, uh, I began drawing. Mm -hmm. Developing a special technique in drawing, and uh, I asked my friend, my writer friend Roger Mandasha, to help me to make a selection of my drawing pictures. And he came, mm -hmm. and when he came in 2000, uh, I put the drawings <laughs> on the side, and then I, get to, I, I began to write, and I'm still writing. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, okay. So. Uh, you lead us to a book, so one can find two parallel yet different stories with some out of biographic elements in your novella. What kind of challenge, challenge is to compose uh, one story of two, otherwise not joinable narratives? One of uh, them is talking about student strikes in 1971. That's the real, real one, the real story. And the other is rather surreal. Uh, you're a Christmas tree seller, as I understood. So, how did you brought this together? And uh, it is singly p philosophical. You never uh, merge those two stories, and you have your novella, one piece of art. Uh, well, um, the book is par partly partly uh, by uh, autobiographical. When, when I re respond in the first degree. But the whole book is an autobiography, mm -hmm. the whole book. My girlfriend Rosa is uh, composed of many girlfriends. <laughs> yeah. Her character is composed from many characters. The hair, the, uh, mm -hmm. the scenery, the, um, uh, the room where she lives and uh, the origins of their, um, their parents. These are all things which come together in her person. So I imagined mm -hmm. I never had a girlfriend called Rosa, but I imagined Rosa uh, to, 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 to exist. So, but since she is uh, a part of many uh, uh, meetings I had uh, mm -hmm. or friendships I had with girls, so this is another part of autobiography in this uh, character. Uh, what is uh, clearly autobiography is, of course, a strike. 
the demonstrations, the actions against uh, we had uh, in high school mm -hmm. and uh, you were part of. Uh, we uh, I were part. I was never in the first range. I was always mm -hmm. in the third range, mm -hmm. but I was embedded in this movement, and I felt that it was very important to have such a movement and to have a newspaper uh, of uh, total liberty. Imagine one time. Uh, you are living in, in Luxembourg and uh, uh, church and authorities and the institutions, they edit papers and they say what to do and uh, they say uh, how to love and how to, 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 to weep and how to, to run and how to sleep and how to live. So we had suddenly, uh, we had a magazine made by uh, students, only by students, and that was completely amazing. We could write what we wanted. So we believed everything which was wrote in this in this newspaper in this magazine well that was one part um, uh, of, of reality and of uh, autobiography of course and the other part uh, is of course the creation of the town of Mar uh, mariona mm -hmm. so that's total uh, uh, contemporary fiction uh, i uh, there's no town uh, <laughs> mariona but uh, the, the town and the river morgan they are imagined from towns I know, uh, and from many towns, uh, towns I know. They are I imagined from Berlin, from Cologne, from, from Trey, from Dudelange, uh, essentially from it's Luxembourg. kind of so Frankenstein of, of towns. Yes, they are so composed, and it's uh, uh, Mariona, it's now a new town in, in my mm -hmm, fiction, mm -hmm. and the River Morgan too. The characters on the flats are also fictional, but again, they are fictional as Rosa is fictional. <laughs> so the book is now, uh, and, and the first story where my uh, my Erwin sells an, a Christmas tree, that's not true. He sells it, I never sold Christmas trees. So, but uh, 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 since the original story had out of a sentimental uh, movement inside of myself, <laughs> I wanted to have this poor guy <laughs> <laughs> selling. <laughs> selling his Christmas trees. <laughs> to and a door. I took, <laughs> I took him again and put him now in the, in the novel and it functions. Mm -hmm. And how much confi confidence in translator you should have after all? We are talking about uh, the, uh, the most uh, suitable context, uh, style. Do you, some, do you have some special demands? Regarding translators, yes. do you give them uh, directions? Because Ksenia Chochkova, the translator, told me that you were so cooperat cooperative, yes. especially uh, for the Luxembourg German that dialect. That is right. Th you are right. Um, translating from um, so, well, what I what uh, what I cannot control and not um, follow is when uh, a translator uh, translated in Hungary or. Or, or Macedonia or Serbia, mm -hmm. I cannot, I cannot speak. I, I don't mm -hmm. understand these languages. Unfortunately, interesting. Well, <laughs> I, but when I gave Luxembourg to the translator, I paid attention to translate it in German to give a German translation mm -hmm. for myself, and to pay attention that this German translation is not exactly the same as Luxembourg is. Luxembourgish is. But it's very near on it. But you ca you cannot translate Luxembourg language uh, word by word. Mm -hmm. uh, Just context. You must context. go g very close to the original context, and you must a uh, little bit write differently. And mm -hmm. that I, I I paid attention that all mm -hmm. the translators uh, when I was in contact with editors who contacted my my editor in Luxembourg that uh, the translator should uh, should uh, make me mail and. Uh, that mm -hmm. I could enter in contact with them. Mm -hmm. And it's very interesting because um, all your other books were written in Luxembourg dialect, but Amateur is uh, released uh, mostly in German with yes. some parts uh, in a dialect. Yes. Was it your reflection on reaching wider audience maybe after all? You've been honored uh, with EU award for literature. I, I, I was very honored with the award, with your award, that's right. I was very, I was surprised and very honored. I was. The, origin, the original story was written in German. It was written uh, uh -huh. when I was in high school and it was a German a teacher uh, who told us to write it. And uh, uh, so I, I wanted to, uh, it, for me it was totally normally that I, uh, very normal that I stay in German language with this story. Mm -hmm. Another story, another book coming now uh, in September, is about the uh, Austrian poet Georg Trakel. Mm -hmm. And this poet too, it's a, he, he writes in German, and my novel uh, around film, Return on Trackle, 
uh, um, it's it's written in it's written in German too. Mm -hmm. So the next book uh, which comes out is in German too. German. Many of the book scenes took place in a brothel in a bordel in this novella. It looks like some kind of light motif and one can find certain brutality when rape without any condemnation from your side. Is there any specific purpose? Like he killed her and like okay. Yes, it was. It's Why? no explanation. Did you want it's to no, make some contrast, brutality and I did not want to give any explanation, any argument for killing her. Mm -hmm. He has uh, I I refer to his childhood. Mm -hmm. Perhaps I refer to his childhood, and I refer to his view of the world, which is a very uh, analytic world. He sees he was Im imprisoned in 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 a cage, and he saw the the world through the through the cage, and he saw a black a black part and a, a, a world part, the black part and the world part, black and mm -hmm. white. So that's the only the only argument I I, I, I give for what he did. Mm -hmm. I did not want to give more, because if I gave more, you enter in total new story, mm -hmm. another story. Uh -huh, okay. And um, I have written uh, recently uh, a, a story in Luxembourgish. Uh, it's called um, uh, Yesel. Uh, I don't know how you translate it. And uh, there is a brutality in this story without explanation. A brutality mm -hmm. against animals, without explanation. If I give an explanation about it, you can enter thousand stories, and you mm -hmm. can uh, analyze this or that one. But I only uh, write the fact that it is mm -hmm, so. Mm -hmm. There is a constant uh, fact, not an alternative fact, but a real fact mm -hmm. that there is brutality done to people, brutality done to animals, and that is part of, unfortunately, of, of, of man, mm -hmm. and. Uh, um, Therefore, I, I write maybe it's this a way. reflection from a film again, because perhaps, uh, perhaps, mm -hmm. perhaps yes. and um, your books take place in a town of your youth, Ash. I I don't remember the the Ash, real yes. name. Yeah, yes. is the local prism? Is that local prism those intimate pre perceptions and details understandable for wider audience for the public? Uh, uh, that was a, a, a very good question because it was discussion. Uh, why is Luxembourg uh, in uninteresting uh, uh, <laughs> in, in literature or in, in film, perhaps? Mm -hmm. Luxembourg is not uninteresting. It depends what you make of it. If you are a good filmmaker and a good photographer, you can do your photographs, your good photographs. Wherever everywhere. you want. Uh -huh. And you can write about everything. You can write about your gun and you can, you can make a masterpiece of it if you are able to do so. Mm -hmm. So you have not, uh, you, 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 you can stay in your bed and imagine uh, a, a story, an amazing story. So, mm -hmm. and if I write about Ash and Dudelange and uh, Quarters, well, it gives authenticity to my writing, mm -hmm. but it is not necessarily an exotic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it could be understood by many people who read this, uh, this book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, those, uh, these awards are um, important for the writers and Very. is this the m uh, models how to, to reach people and how to, to, well, to be translated in more languages and is it helpful? Uh, Tell us about your experience. Helpful. It is still very helpful. Uh, the book is translated in six languages now. It has been <laughs> edited in six countries, so it's absolutely wow. amazing. And it uh, will have the chance to be edited in America too. So he managed one time my little my little hometown and my my fish my my, my <laughs> the fish taken out of the jacket and put on the table. <laughs> Well, it's exotic, but it's real, it mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, the price was uh, uh, important on three on three levels. It was all important for me because I, I never won the prize before. I was absolutely amazed, and then for a long time, for 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 for, for uh, weeks, I did not come down from my from <laughs> my uh, from my cloud. So it was a terrible motivation for me, a terrible mm -hmm. strong motivation to go on writing. And I said it in an interview uh, I gave in, uh, in Brussels uh, in 2010 when the prize was given. 
the second was a promotion in Luxembourg. So uh, everybody was, wow, wha what's that? What's that? What's that? You pin. But he, he's director of the CNA. But, but he, he writes. And he won the prize. Wha what's that? <laughs> and that was amazing too. But the most important is the creation of network. Mm -hmm. The prize is uh, uh, focused on translation. And that I think it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. most interesting. Because uh, that's most interesting. Uh, do you feel that? Uh, it's a disadvantage uh, to write in German, for example, because uh, we, we know that uh, English language is lingua franca of nowadays. And what do you think? Are you in uh, some kind of position that... Uh, I have uh, made a made personal choice. It's uh, to write in Luxembourg and to write in German. And um, I assume it's his choice. That's my choice. And uh, uh, I do not write in France nor in, in English. Not, not in the novel. Um, well, but I, I have a pro and I have no problem. But I, I have a constant the fact that I can write during a period in one language. Because I do not want to write only in this language. I, I want to assume the language completely. I want to work with this language with everything it gives. And Luxembourgish is a small language, a language in danger, but also a very delicate language. And you can uh, marvelously play with it, and you can imagine, and you can create, and you can imagine all what you want, and uh, uh, that, that that's for me very very challenging. On the other side, when I have I have just uh, I have published three monologues in Luxembourgish, and uh, I stopped, and I began to write on Frackle in German. So I'm now uh, 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 on the way for a long period of time in German mm -hmm. and uh, because I want to do the same in this language I want to to assume this language and to work with it completely and to to push it to the limits I have and to the limits perhaps also of the language but in the concurrence is much more <laughs> big than it is in Luxembourgish mm -hmm. you are in concurrence with the most important writers of the world when you are in German so that is a motivation too for me to push the language for, mm -hmm. further <laughs> and to create uh, with it and uh, to use it as, a, as, a, as an expression uh, um, as, as strong as I can. And when I have reached a point where I f have the feeling, not me with struggle, but perhaps now with other stories uh, and with my new uh, novel, uh, Vitaly, uh, when I have finished it and when, I've, uh, when, I've, when I have, will have the feeling that I, I gave, that, that's for me, it's, it, it would be okay on the fantasy, on the creativity. Mm -hmm. Then I stop, I make a pause, and then I will recontinue in Luxembourgish and see what the German language <laughs> has supported as, as an input to my Luxembourgish. Mm -hmm. And have you ever think of uh, making a movie or a sitcom or something because you have your place, Ash, and people there, your stories, and... I was never asked. I, mean, I, I, I've never, I, I was never asked to do so. I have written three pieces for theatre, three monologues. The last book I published, uh, uh, Santa Mortale. Um, uh, it could have been uh, presented as a monologue from an actor on the scene. Mm -hmm. Nobody contacted me, s no, but the uh, book had very good uh, critics in Luxembourg, the best. Mm -hmm. and. Um, Realizing a film, uh, I had realized a film, and I'm writing a book about this film. So <laughs> <laughs> Opposite <laughs> <laughs> situation. Yes. I do not want to continue in the mainstream. In Luxembourg, uh, I say it, it's a problem. Everybody uh, uh, works Narrow very narrowly narrow in his domain, and uh, mm -hmm. is very jealous that nobody should enter this. <laughs> uh, it's a pity. But uh, uh, it's it's not. Uh, it's the same in other countries too. Mm -hmm. And uh, just at the end, would you tell us something about your next plan, maybe ne uh, from Macedonia, you're traveling to Luxembourg or somewhere else, something ahead? Yes, I, I told you that I'm now preparing um, the book of Trakel, okay. uh, the book uh, written about uh, the making, the filmmaking in the 70, in 78, and a very important in, uh, part because at this moment, um, in Luxembourg, uh, film, modern filmmaking began, and we had invested such uh, uh, such uh, uh, an enthusiasm in this uh, poem of Trakel uh, that the film, completely done as an amateur experience, 
uh, was astonishing uh, people and um, we were asked from Salzburg to show it in Salzburg and we were in contact with Peter Hanke suddenly with Peter Rosai, Hoshti Achman mm -hmm. and uh, we got uh, journalists from Salzburg and Archen, they spoke about our, our film so it was imagined one time, we showed the film in 78 we had no copy, we had no technique, we had only our enthusiasm and pictures uh, being uh, photographs mm -hmm. um, uh, put in this film to illustrate this uh, our creation of the young maiden, the poem of Trakel. And uh, for me, it's, it was, as I said, very important to to write this novel uh, and beginning it in uh, August 2015 during the, the big crisis of uh, migration, because you cannot. I told uh, this afternoon, you cannot, you cannot write about Georg Trakel and his poem and his at the film we we turned about one of his poems without being without mentioning what happened around mm. you mm -hmm. so that's the next project and um, then I uh, have given another manuscript to an, to an editor for my uh, for the story uh, uh, Danke, yes, uh, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, mixed with two uh, uh, with uh, 20 other short stories and I am now writing uh, uh, a new manus on new manuscript uh, on three, four uh, longer stories in German, and uh, I will give it to the editor at the end of the uh, at the middle of the year. And then I will, uh, from summer, I will uh, uh, again work on the big novel on of the Italian immigrant mm -hmm. and his story with the earthquake in uh, eighty six, I believe. <laughs> so so many things going on. And, and I work on my photographic work too. Uh, yeah, and when my last question, when you're gonna say I'm happy, I've succeeded? Never, never. You, you cannot. You are satisfied when you have accomplished uh, accomplished a good manuscript. And I have the feeling that I, I I gave every everything I could to make a, a, a good manuscript in my sense. But I, I'm not a lecturer because mm -hmm. the next step is a lecturer and the next step is the editor and and so on. So uh, when I have the feeling that uh, I have given all what I can, uh, then I, I feel good. I, I, I'm really satisfied and normally I go to a restaurant and <laughs> drink a glass of wine and have, an, have a pasta. <laughs> yeah. But uh, when you write that, when, we, when you're producing things, you are always going on and going on mm -hmm. and uh, searching for, for making it better and for making it interesting also for people mm -hmm. and for public. So. And writers by default are unhappy <laughs> people. <laughs> <laughs> so this kind of hedonism is a highlight. Yeah, yes, that's great. it is a really mm -hmm. highlight that uh, I'm really happy that uh, I was invited here in, in mm -hmm. Macedonia to uh, see the, the publishing of the book in uh, mm -hmm. Macedonia. Okay, thank you very much Thank for you. this interview.